Asia Week Ahead with Wayne Arnold, economics editor for Reuters. And Wayne, let's start with China. PMIs coming out, yet another chance to look at the economy. Yeah. Seasonal distortions, though, could that mess with the numbers? Uh, no, this is all about optimism, so I think that's factored into people's perceptions. They know that December is, gonna, is a really good month. They know that January is going to be pretty good. Um, I think what we're going to see is we've had the HSBC numbers out today, and those are looking quite positive. The official numbers are always a little more positive. I, you know, there's, always, there's a lot of debate China's about why. China's doing well. Surprise, China's doing surprise. fantastic. The government asks you how China's doing. It's doing very well. Thank you very much. Um, I think, though, that the numbers are bottom out and perceptions are people are feeling a little better about growth, whether it's sustainable or not, is irrelevant to this poll. China's definitely rebounding. Okay. Speaking of feeling a little bit better about growth, we start the Japan earnings season. Yeah. And sort of kicking that off is a sense of how the car market's doing. Yeah. What are we going to hear? Okay, remember this is third quarter for them in the fiscal year. It's not, it's not that significant, but it is a good yardstick. I think we're going to see largely flat uh, growth year on year in sales for the industry as a whole, but there could be some standouts. Remember that they're coming back from last year in 2011, the earthquake, and trying to rebuild from their part supplies. Uh, this year they had the China boycott, I think, which was actually a little less severe in terms of overall impact. Honda might be a standout. Honda reports next week, and I think they might show very, very strong sort of 25% growth year on year in sales, and maybe even say 5 to 6% increase in operating profit. They may be a standout as they rebound from a very serious uh, aftershock from the earthquake. As you mentioned, these are Q3 <clears throat> earnings, and a lot yeah. of the changes, the weakening yen, Abenomics, all sort of coming later and now. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see any hints of that creeping into earnings or sales? No, it's way too early for that. I mean, I, the, most companies, you'll see that in terms of their spending plans. I think uh, next week we also have a Tonkan survey that might come out that might show some greater optimism. Uh, what you will see is an improvement in the global picture for exports, and that will be translated into the industrial output numbers we'll see from Japan. Funny you should mention that. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask about. Okay. So that's going to show it, is it? Yeah, I think it won't be dramatic. I mean, don't look for double-digit increases, but what you won't see are more negative, uh, negative growth, more declines in industrial output where companies are ratcheting back. I think we'll see, in Japan's case, more like a 1% year-on-year growth in, in quarterly output, and I think we'll see the same thing across the sea of Japan and Korea. Uh, despite the fact that the yen is sinking and the Korean won is rising very strongly, I think both are getting the benefit of a slow, steady, but and st sort of stubborn increase in global exports. Last question. We do have that manufacturing competitiveness sort of rearing mm -hmm. its head between Japan yeah. and Korea. Right. In terms of the industrial production numbers, are we going to start seeing differences as to who's kind of winning out? I think it's still too early to see that yet. I think that will start to translate maybe in the second quarter of this year and the, and the second half. We might see that more. And we'll then know whether the Koreans are going to take action to arrest the rise of the one. But actually, you know, we, we think that they might not do this. They might actually take advantage of a stronger one to let that do the work for them in sort of restructuring their own economy domestically. Their companies, the big exporters like Samsung Electronics, they've actually outgrown Korea. They sort of produce, they don't produce as many domestic jobs. They're like Apple, more or less. They're producing jobs all over the world. They're Global very company. big. And Koreans don't want to work in factories anymore. They've achieved a certain level of wealth. They'd rather work in domestic service industries. And a stronger one actually helps them. So they're actually on the flip side of Japan and wanting a currency to rise rather than fall, as long as it doesn't become too severe. If it becomes too severe and really does start to hit exports and hit growth, that's a problem, and they might have to step into what people are worried about, which is currency wars. You'll hear this phrase a lot this quarter. Still an interesting week. We've got lots of data and all those Japanese earnings. Wayne yeah. Arnold, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.